Gamer fans may be surprised to know, but in the past, no company understood how to make a good fighting game better than Capcom. It took many attempts in the 1980s to find the right formula to emulate the feeling of a street fight in a game. Capcom managed to get it right. Even though Street Fighter came to be at the forefront of the fighting game genre, nothing was more compelling than the arrival of Street Fighter 2. These Street Fighter titles probably wouldn't be what they are without the King of Fighters to give it unrivaled competition. In this episode, explore with us the exciting story of the struggle between Capcom and SNK, two of the most legendary Japanese video game companies for the title of the 16-bit video game market. Which of these companies came out to be the winner? Without further ado, let me welcome you to the Street Fighterverse. Late in the 1980s, only a few serious attempts were made to make one-on-one -on -one fighting games. As a result of the limited gameplay, they failed to attract any attention commercially. At the time, technology was not able to provide a fluid experience where a character could perform special techniques or shots naturally. A Japanese video game designer named Takashi Nishiyama was one of the employees who was mostly dedicated to take on the task of creating the ultimate combat video game experience. He developed the first version of Street Fighter in 1987, which was unsuccessful due to the lack of gameplay and the high risk of the project. But that didn't stop Nishiyama. He laid the groundwork for ideas such as the Hadouken from Ryu. He then joined SNK, where he worked on Neo Geo, a cartridge arcade board aimed at low-cost markets such as China, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, and South America. At SNK, since he already designed and developed the first Street Fighter game, this experience would lead him to create Fatal Fury, the first serious competitor of Street Fighter 2, the new game that Capcom had released months earlier and that revolutionized the industry. This set the stage for a fierce battle between SNK and the new giant as SNK would be the underdog. The success of Street Fighter 2 was unprecedented. The game was revolutionary in many ways, both in terms of graphics and gameplay, as well as in terms of the number of characters. Players lined up in the arcades to enjoy the game while ignoring the other titles. In spite of such a scenario, SNK didn't give up and worked hard to capitalize on the booming fighting game market. Not only did he develop more versions of Fatal Fury, he also managed to develop other legends like the art of fighting and even form partnerships with ADK, who published World Heroes for Neo Geo. In 1994, after two mysterious teasers set in the latest versions of Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting, SNK released its big surprise, a surprise that Capcom finally had to take care of, the first known crossover of the genre, none other than King of Fighters, a game that combined the roster of fighters from its two fighting games with some new ones. The King of Fighters allowed three versus three battles and has since become an annual addition with better and new animations and other new features. The company had previously released improved versions of Street Fighter 2 which were still successful but lacked creativity. For Capcom, it was clear that they had to respond with something as original as KOF, but their actions were dire. Their focus was on developing a better arcade motherboard that would offer higher technical quality, better animations, better graphics, and better gameplay. This new hardware became a reality with the integration of the CPS system too. The arcade board released for the Super Street Fighter 2 in 1993. The first popular game outside of the Street Fighter franchise was The Darkstalkers, which received great reviews for its amazing cast and overall gameplay. However, the final counterattack of Capcom became a reality, with the release of X-Men Children of the Atom, a fighting title that was made possible with the license Capcom had received from Marvel. That license would not go to waste, and for years to come, Capcom would offer its own version of a crossover with Marvel Super Heroes, a title that allowed various of the publisher's characters to face each other. X-Men vs Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, and finally Marvel vs Capcom were all great games that made even the King of Fighters look old-fashioned. Despite this, SNK did not give up and continued this successful standard of quality that had made the King of Fighters so famous. Almost every year, the game was redesigned, new animations, new drawings, and more characters. The point of excellence would arrive for many in the King of Fighters 98, considered by some publications to be the best fighting game of all time. Unfortunately, SNK's poor decisions and financial difficulties gave it an obvious disadvantage over Capcom at least commercially. Soon after, SNK got acquired and filed for bankruptcy, and Nishiyama left and started his own independent studio. But before departing, he left behind a parting gift, one that neatly tied a bow on his past decade. 
he hatched an idea to bring both franchises together, which eventually morphed into Capcom vs SNK and others, leaving this rivalry behind. So what did you like about this rivalry? Let us know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on new theories and info. Thank you for watching. This has been your Street Fighter host. Welcome to the center stage. Our new Discord server. There you can talk with us, chat about current events going on in Street Fighter, information, theories, and lore. We'll leave the link in the description box below. We want to thank everyone for tuning in and becoming part of the Street Fighter community. We want to thank you for your positive comments towards our channel because it only habilitates us to grow even more. From the Street Fighterverse crew, we thank you.